Quick recap for those in the back. Everything was going great, like relatively speaking. The birds had it down as they killed two birds with one stone by making themselves more essential than Helen, thus getting her killed off, and basically winning Navarro the cartel war, as they were able to get the government to send troops in to fight the Lugrinos cartel. But then this nephew of Navarro's, Javi Alessandro, comes in out of nowhere like a freaking wrecking ball, and is all like, oh, I'm gonna take over the family business and kill my uncle. So Navarro wasn't worried about the Lagunas cartel anymore because they were yesterday's problem, as they were virtually defeated with US military intervention. So Navarro's fear shifts from an external threat to an internal one, because Javi's out here just trying to kill everyone. So Navarro's like, okay, I made the right choice by, you know, killing Helen, because Marty and Wendy still have connections to the FBI. Navarro wanted to cut a deal with the FBI so he could travel freely between the states and Mexico. So right before the deal was gonna go down, Navarro appoints Javi to become the successor and take over the cartel. This way Navarro could give up his nephew who's trying to kill him, while presenting the FBI with enough information to neutralize the entire cartel. However, it was not that easy. The FBI wanted Navarro to stay on as the head of the cartel for the next five years. They didn't want to take down the cartel. Instead, they wanted to establish a relationship between them and Navarro. But wait, why is the FBI wanting to do this? Remember that one time where Navarro told Maya about the gun shipment that Javi set up so that Maya and the FBI could intercept it? And then they continued doing stuff like that until Javi interrupted their agreement? Well, the FBI wants to continue doing that with Navarro for the next five years because it makes the FBI look good and useful if they're constantly seizing drug money and illegal weapons. After five years, then the FBI would grant Navarro with immunity. Supposedly. Maya Miller, who is actually doing her job, is somewhat displeased with the news that the FBI is just taking advantage of the situation and going completely off the books. Instead of neutralizing the cartel like she was previously led to believe, the FBI wants to make sure that Navarro remains in power and keep the cartel alive and well. So Maya, being the one person who's interested in doing their job, goes like, okay, I'm not putting up with this. So she ends up using local police to arrest Omar because he was on US soil and we completely had him in our jurisdiction. The news and media coverage highlighting the arrest of Navarro completely ruined the FBI's plan. So then Marty and Wendy had to come up with a new plan to save their family for like the 18th time. So here's the new plan. Marty and Wendy had to convince Navarro to tell Javi that he was working with the FBI the entire time, then convince Javi to take the same deal that Navarro was going to take. That way the FBI FBI could arrest Javi, and then extradite Navarro back to Mexico. The FBI then turns the deal with Javi into 10 years, allowing him absolute freedom to run the cartel in Mexico as long as he meets the fiscal stipulation they agreed on, meaning the FBI is going to be taking 10 more years of money seizures so that they can get more of that funding and credibility, basically rigging the entire system so Navarro doesn't have to face trial. But Javi got the deal with the FBI, and he got the cartel, and the birds claim that that if anything happens to them, Navarro's children are going to lose all of their legitimate assets and capital. Then, on top of all of that, they threaten Navarro with letting Javi know that Navarro was going to give up his nephew and the entire cartel to the FBI. So the birds had it made, and they can be together again, and they can be safe and happy and go back to Chicago and oh wait, Ruth, no, what are you doing? Oh wait, never mind, it was just a daydream. Phew. Oh wait, Ruth, what are you doing again? And then Ruth did this. Why, Ruth? We were so close. Oh wait, I know why. Javi wanted to get rid of Darlene for a while now, but after he found out that Darlene's product was being used by Shaw Medical Solutions, when he halted his own product from being used by Shaw Medical, that's when Javi decided to pull the trigger. During Javi's plan to get rid of Darlene, Wyatt was just caught in the crossfire. So with Wyatt being unalived, Ruth goes into full rage mode. When she confirms it wasn't Frank Jr., she then goes after the birds. Jonah, the one who picked a very inconvenient time to be in his rebellious face, tells Ruth all about Javi. The birds needed Javi to stay alive in order for their plan to work, but Ruth couldn't care less knowing that her entire family is dead due to her affiliation with the birds. Gosh, I can't believe her entire family is dead now. But for real, I'm actually really glad that three got out. Anyway, Ruth killed Javi, so now things are awkward because the birds have to go back to Navarro, who is still in prison because the extradition that was previously promised to him was a straight-up lie. Marty has to go to Mexico to act as Navarro 
Navarro in Run the Cartel. This is where Marty meets Camilla, the mother of Javi. She seems pretty cool, until you figure out that she's the one who ordered the hit on Navarro and is trying to manipulate Marty, like getting information out of Marty on how he's gonna get Navarro back to Mexico, so she can block Navarro from getting off the SDN list, making it impossible for Navarro to return. With Javi being the definition of dead, Claire Shaw is wanting to get as far away from the cartel as humanly possible. Claire decides to ditch Wendy and Marty, no longer honoring their agreement of receiving the cartel's product to cut costs on production. Wyatt died, which sucks, but Ruth got to inherit Darlene's farm, because Wyatt picked the perfect time to get married to Darlene before they both died, allowing Ruth to use her inherited product to partner with Claire. This is bad, because the birds no longer have the $150 million donation from Shaw Medical. You know, the one thing that was going to make the Bird Family Foundation possible. The Bird Family Foundation was the only way to gain political power and create a legitimate empire for the birds. By the way, I love the parallels between the birds and Omar, but perhaps my favorite one is how the birds keep justifying their actions by telling themselves all the good the foundation is going to do, while Omar over here has a priest on standby to constantly absolve him of all of his sins. Everyone is deluding themselves into thinking that they can still come out of this as a good person. Also, remember when Omar said, I don't threaten to kill children. And then like a day later, he says, And your pathetic kids are all dead. Yeah, I don't see any contradiction there. Anyway, Camilla storms into Shaw Medical, and takes Javi's stock options, and continues the arrangement that Claire and Javi agreed on, meaning Wendy got her $150 million donation back. No one backed out of the Foundation fundraiser. In fact, they were still fielding requests. The birds were virtually unstoppable, but couldn't stop the death of Ruth, as Camilla turned into the new Ruthless Navarro, pun intended. Oh god, Think of how many people just clicked off the video. Camilla had her brother transferred. During this transfer, the FBI had one officer shoot this other unsuspecting officer, then have the trigger-happy officer place the murder weapon in Omar's hands, and then have Omar walk a few steps to give the illusion that Omar shot an officer and tried to escape. Mel was unsatisfied with his bribed position in the Chicago PD, because he couldn't leave the bird case alone. He ends up finding Ben, but he decides to make the mistake of telling the people People he's going to screw over, how he's going to screw them over. This is a very common mistake that's typically made by supervillains, not good guys. So he made this really stupid mistake of telling people this who are affiliated with the cartel, resulting in him just not being alive anymore. In order to better understand the ending with Jonah, we have to go back to every single season. In season 5 episode 1, Ruling Days, Buddy shows Jonah how to use a weapon. Later in the episode, Ash breaks into the bird's house to do some of his own detective work. Jonah takes out his gun to go after Ash, but then decides, you know, not to do that, so he puts his gun away and then gets into his mother's car. In Season 1 Episode 10, The Toll, when Garcia enters the bird's house to stop them from leaving, Jonah takes that gun back out again. But what Jonah didn't know is that Buddy kept track of where Jonah was keeping the gun and then removed the bullets. Buddy previously had some affiliation with Frank Cosgrove and the Kansas City mob, meaning back in the day Buddy was involved with, you know, crime. So Buddy recognized that Marty and Wendy were involved in some criminal activity themselves, and he didn't want Jonah to get involved with it. When it came down to taking Garcia's life, Jonah needed Wendy's approval to pull the trigger. But since Buddy removed the bullets, Jonah's gun worked as well as Navarro's in his last moments. Instead, Buddy was the one to shoot Garcia and save the birds. When Buddy shoots Garcia, the window behind him shatters. As you know, this imagery of the window shattering is a very important thing, so make note of it. In Season 2, Episode 3, Once a Langmore, Jonah joins the Snell family on the first day of hunting season. They spot a deer, and then Jacob Snell gives the first kill to Jonah. Jonah fires his weapon, kills the deer, and is given a taxidermied head of it. Then later on, Jonah covers up this deer head, symbolic of how he's rejecting this path of violence. We then see Jonah focus on normal teenage stuff like flying drones and running Mike Flem's money laundering accounts. But when Jonah was made fun of by Tommy with Aaron present, he takes Tommy's gun and then shoots all three bottles in a very precise manner. Further down, demonstrating to us his capabilities. In Season 3, after Ben dies, Jonah goes after Helen. During their conversation, Helen tells Jonah the truth, that Wendy was the one who okayed Ben's death. Jonah finding Ben's ashes in the house confirms the validity of Helen's words, causing Jonah to angrily pump up his shotgun and then shoot out a window, mirroring this shot of Buddy killing Garcia. And as it's revealed in Season 4, Jonah didn't just shoot out that window, but a lot of other windows, telling us early on that Jonah is pushed to the point where he's willing to take a life. 
life. When I saw the broken glass door, I immediately thought of these windows getting blown out. Jonah now has not just the approval of Wendy, but Marty and Charlotte as well. We open the series with Marty Bird narrating his understanding of how the world works, claiming that money is, at its essence, that measure of a man's choices. In Season 4, Episode 8, The Cousin of Death, Ruth sees the full-grown bobcats that we last saw in Season 2. To me, this was like the most tragic moment. In the episode Once a Langmore, they bring up the Langmore curse. The Langmores being cursed basically means that they are destined to walk the same path and nothing will ever change for them. So they will just be this low-life, crime-ridden family forever. During this episode, Ruth is told that she's gonna carry the Langmore name forever. But she's also trying to separate herself from these toxic family traditions. Like trying to get wide into a college and going shopping for a nicer piece of property. This episode ends with Ruth setting the Bobcats free, claiming that it's their choice now. Symbolic of how Ruth understands that she has a choice in this world, that she can continue to be contributing to the Langmore name, or she can take a different path. So in Season 4, Episode 14, when Marty gave her the opportunity to start over with a new name, and Ruth responds, I like my name. I knew she was gonna be in trouble. It's mentioned that Ruth was with her father or some other family member every time she was arrested. So Ruth, getting her record expunged, fully separated herself from that part of being a Langmore. She saw the Bobcats before killing Javi because it reminded her of the choice she still had, to continue this path of crime or staying as clean as possible and just moving on from the situation. But she decided to follow in the same footsteps as the previous Langmores, taking Javi's life and making her biggest mistake. Because because it resulted in something that will not make the fan base upset in any way, shape, or form. The judge explained to Jonah and Charlotte that they were old enough to make their own choice of whether or not to live with their parents. And in the end, the kids ended up choosing that life with their parents. But to be honest, and if we're being super duper honest, I feel like they would have chosen that life regardless of whether or not their grandfather was a scumbag. Charlotte even says to Jonah that it's okay if he admits that part of him wants to go to the fundraiser. Also, the ending scene with Jonah shooting Mel makes me feel sick for multiple reasons. The first one being how Marty and Wendy are both smiling at the fact that their son is about to kill someone. It's been a slow transition to get to this point, but still. When this show began, Marty and Wendy didn't want their kids to know about what was going on with the cartel, because they didn't want their kids to get involved. But then they realized that the only way for their family to function in this very unique situation is to have an increased level of transparency when it comes to the work they're doing for the cartel. Marty and Wendy's criminal activity bled into their kids' lives. As Jonah's out here creating his own software to launder money and Charlotte is running the casino to launder money. Thinking that Dell was going to kill him, Marty experienced this flashback of him and his family playing on the trampoline. The trampoline makes an appearance when Wendy and the kids come back at the end of season 1, and it also comes back in the middle of season 4 when Marty thought they were in the clear. The trampoline has always been associated with the unification of the family, and here, they're all unified but as criminals. This final scene taking place right next to the trampoline is a stark contrast to where their family began and where their family ended up. The birds are now all on the same page. Jonah is going to enter more legitimate work like his parents, but claims he's fine with getting involved in more criminal activity after high school. And Charlotte's not going to college so she can work for her parents. Oh, that reminds me, I have some friends who said that the car crash scene was pretty pointless. Just kidding, I have no friends, but I did hear a lot of people say this. So I just want to quickly give my analysis on the car crash to hopefully change anyone's mind out there and have who has similar thoughts. Because I personally loved how the car crash scene played out. But first, let's address the elephant in the room. For anyone who's confused about how everyone in the car survived, uh, a scary Dell once said, Top rank when you ran in the US. That's all the logic you need. Anyway, going back to how the car crash was pointless, except it wasn't. In season one, episode eight, Kaleidoscope, we were brought back to the year 2007. Wendy worked on the Obama campaign for his state senate race, but left politics to focus on her family. And as a result, she was never able to re-enter the game. Marty was still working as an incredibly talented talented financial advisor at his firm with his partner named Bruce. Dell recognized Marty's talent and wanted to bring him on as a client. During this time, Wendy was pregnant, but she and Marty got in a car accident. Wendy was the one who really took the hit in the accident, and as a result, she was hospitalized, causing her to lose the child she was carrying. Wendy lost a kid and failed to get back into the political world, causing her to hit a low point. When doing his audit for Dell, Marty discovered that Dell's current partner was skimming money. As a thank you, Dell invited Marty to one of his resorts. The same place where Marty and Wendy accepted Dell's offer, Marty realizes he made a huge mistake. Not that one, different one. Yeah, 
That one. The moment Del murders Lewis in front of him was the moment that changed Marty and caused him to create so much distance between him and his family. Marty knew what he got his family involved with and he understood the severity of the situation. He emotionally distanced himself from everyone and then never stopped working. Wendy even claims that Marty shut her out the moment he accepted the deal, causing Wendy to have an affair and dividing the family for years to come. Before accident number two, the kids still had some resentment towards their parents. But after the accident, it, everyone seemed to be reunited, like it strengthened their family. Before accident number one, Marty and Wendy were listening to the song That'll Be The Day by Buddy Holly. Marty was using this song to reinforce his argument on how one single decision can drastically affect the future. And when the birds were discussing their return to Chicago, they were listening to the song Bring It Home by Sam Cooke, a song about losing someone you love and wanting them to return. Getting in accident number one is what pushed them to enter the cartel world and tore their family apart. But accident number two was what brought them back together. And if you still think the accident is pointless, let me know in the- No, I'm just kidding. Don't let me know in the comments yet because I'm not done with the accident, but we're gonna talk about something else for a second. And then we're gonna come back to the accident. What, you think this is just some random stupid analysis channel? No, this is a semi-mediocre analysis. Maya's move to arrest Navarro really messed up her career. She can't be fired because there's no reason to fire her, but she is punished by getting taken out of the field and stuck in an office job. The same kind of office job that she worked so hard to get out of. Maya acted on emotion towards the end there. She revoked her previous offer to Marty that would allow him to join the FBI. She was mad that her superiors took her out of the field because she decided not to fall in line with a shady off-the-books deal involving the cartel. The same cartel she's been trying to take down this entire time. Denying Marty a position at the FBI is what pushed him into having to go with Wendy's plan. Her denying Marty helped feed the corrupt system that she resented. Maya was very by the books to a fault. The only other person who was passionate about the Birds case was Agent Evans. But we begin season 4 with Agent Evans suspended. After Maya reported him for accepting a confession he knew was false. Evans had been on the Bird case from the moment the Birds abruptly packed up their stuff and made their way down to the Ozarks. I remember as a tactic, Evans announced himself to the Birds, thus blowing his cover as a Fed. Evans, being an ex-boyfriend of Petty, should have suspected that Petty was up to no good with suggesting this plan, because this tactic of Agent Evans announcing himself was never going to work, and sabotaged Evans' involvement with the ground investigation. Petty was wanting to handle the case on his own, to boost his career. The character of Agent Evans is really tragic. He used to be more by the books like Maya, but Agent Petty kind of messed up his investigation. Subsequently, Evans followed in Petty's footsteps, just from sheer desperation. So no matter what Agent Evans did, whether he was playing by the books or breaking the rules, he was still sabotaged by his fellow agents. In season 3, we see a flashback of Marty as a kid, when he discovers this one arcade game at the hospital. After observing another kid playing it, Marty realizes that even though the other kid is good at the game, the only way to become number one on the leaderboard is to have enough quarters, aka have enough money, which is a great life lesson. The entire system is fixed like the arcade game. This brings us to reason number two as to why the final scene disturbed me. It's mirroring how Darlene killed Dell. It's the same reckless and power-hungry behavior exhibited by Darlene Snell. During Mel's speech at the end, he claims that the world doesn't work in favor of people like the birds. But the birds have finally made enough quarters to win a fixed game. In season 4, Marty becomes Omar Navarro 2.0. He throws the ball just like Navarro. He tortures people for information just like Navarro. He menacingly looks down at people through a hole in the floor just like, you guessed it, Omar. Navarro. Marty even finds discrepancies in one of the books that belongs to Navarro's business partner. Then, he later gets rid of that business partner, if you know what I mean. I mean killing. Uh, killing is what I mean by that. This is mirroring how Dell got rid of Bruce and company when they were caught skimming money from the cartel. Marty has literally become the people who have been holding him hostage this entire time. And Wendy finally becomes as rich and powerful as she's always wanted to be, becoming someone who's very successful in politics. To the point where she was able to mess with politicians who she was overwhelmingly intimidated by in the past. In season 1, Jonas studies vultures and European starlings, learning that vultures 
vultures swoop in and feed off of dead animals. This is symbolic of how the birds come into the Ozarks and start feeding off of dead businesses. During episode 7, Nest Box, we see a documentary about the European starling, an invasive species of bird that destroys the ecosystem. Same as the bird family, as their presence destroyed businesses in the Ozarks and they ended up wiping out a lot of people, including almost the entire Langmore family. The starling consumes nearly all the eggs of the nearly extinct eastern bluebird. When hearing that, I couldn't help but think of how Marty Bird preyed on the Blue Cat Lodge. But like the vultures and the starlings, the birds simply pick up and leave when they're done feeding. The way Marty finally convinced Rachel to let him invest in the Blue Cat Lodge was by standing up for Tuck. But then in the future, Marty no longer needed the Blue Cat Lodge, so he decides to abandon it and the business fails again. This causes Tuck, someone who Marty said he would look after, to be left unemployed. Don't even get me started on where Zeke is right now, I'm still trying to figure that out. Some people were complaining that the ending seemed a bit rushed, as the show was rapidly introducing new characters like Javi and Camilla. But that's kind of the point. There's always going to be someone to replace the head of the cartel. The priest says to Wendy that the accident was the bird's last warning, but Wendy interprets it as an assurance that they're going to make it out alive. But based on the foundation to which they built their empire on, the birds will always have their lives at risk, and they will always be covering stuff up, as there will always be a cartel leader who the birds have to prove their loyalty to. The birds are trapped in this never-ending cycle. Take Omar, for example. He's someone keeping the birds in the cartel world, as he is trying to leave it himself, showing us that not even the people running the show want to be there. The birds spend this entire series trying to get out of the world of crime, only to fully embrace it at the end. Okay, I hope you liked the video so far, but I realized that I haven't really slept since Ozark premiered because I've been working on this video, so I'm gonna go to sleep. So I guess for now, just consider this the end of part one. And when I wake up, I'm gonna eat some pancakes and maybe some waffles because I'm feeling dangerous, and I'm gonna start working on part two. So look forward to part two of this Ozark analysis coming out like later this week. Thanks for watching, guys.